good afternoon everyone so we had uh, done almost five chapters so far is it not yes. we finished our basics on income public finance money banking inflation those were the things which we have completed so far so as part of our uh, core economics uh, subjects uh, we will be looking at uh, the external sector first today which is uh, actually almost uh, towards the end of the uh, economic survey then we will get back to the sectoral perspective uh, two sectors we'll be covering today agriculture and the services uh, what will be remaining is uh, industry and infrastructure we have bulked uh, those chapters together so industry and uh, physical and digital infrastructure for um, social infrastructure varieties of infrastructure they have divided uh, two chapters so those two chapters and the industry related thing will be the last session which we will be holding in the next week so today we are going to see uh, three chapters i can understand that uh, you have a feeling that this is never ending <laughs> but uh, if i rush a bit then you will say that uh, we didn't understand anything because madam went uh, fast and then uh, already economic survey is one such thing where there is lot of data facts figures you will uh, feel very unconnected between two different slides so i didn't want to complicate the situation further so let's keep uh, things simpler whatever we do we do today and then the rest of the three chapters the industry and uh, social physical digital infra all those things in the subsequent class with that we'll finish there is one chapter uh, on climate change which we wouldn't be uh, teaching much uh, as a classroom uh, session so that uh, chapter alone you may have to read on your own out of the 12 chapters we are uh, uh, discussing 11 so one chapter alone you will have to read right so mostly environment based uh, things and they would have taught you in other classes also i wouldn't uh, feel that it would be mostly economics to tell you so you will be able to read that particular chapter which is on the climate change the rest of the things we will see uh, today and then next so before getting into the external sector uh, i also want to uh, refresh your uh, whatever you have studied the basics of it you would have studied about the balance of payment uh, uh, the current account the capital account and the details of it and you would have studied about fdi fpi hmm? all those things and uh, certain topics on uh, foreign exchange reserves and uh, current account convertibility capital account convertibility external debt uh, all these things have been covered in the class right we have heard all these words so uh, the, there was a discussion on the balance of payment uh, with certain details on the current capital and the components of it we know how to balance the balance of payment we are all familiar with it we know what is current account deficit current account surplus capital account deficit capital account surplus bop deficit bop surplus yes uh, yes all of these things and balance of balance of payments you have heard this word also right so if you are thorough with all these words we will go ahead in case if we find any difficulty in relating that to the present data and the statistics uh, i have got that original uh, the ppt which you would have undergone in the class if it is required you stop me if we are not able to link between the data and the graphs you can uh, ask me to explain again i will go back to the conceptual slide then i'll get back to the right we have been taught with near year everything nominal effective exchange rate real effective exchange rate currency appreciation depreciation currency appreciation depreciation has been taught near and rear we have done any formulas on it explanation interpretations so that part alone there is a question which is getting repeated from that area not repeated but is being asked in the area so we will uh, slow down a bit to look at the concepts and we'll get back so they have given the title for this uh, chapter as watchful and hopeful so we know there were lots of difficulties which we explained in the first chapter itself uh, sequential things right covid followed that there was soil crisis followed that there was war followed that again now 
we are having inflationary situation so different types of uh, uh, economic turmoils are happening across the uh, countries at the global level so we are going to look at uh, now in terms of numbers see when we are saying uh, uh, trade we have to assume two keywords below that exports and imports the moment you say exports and imports you have to add two more words to it which is goods and services right so as long as we are discussing uh, growth in global mercantile trade when you hear to the word mercantile trade you have to remember only about the goods we heard mercantile trade means all the things which you can touch and feel you are not supposed to talk about though it's written as trade exports imports all those things don't put uh, services into this mercantile means physically touch and feel things so which means it is all about the goods right so you can uh, see first of all there is an introduction about the global level trade so the expectation is obviously that there is a shrinkage in the global level trade mainly because of the difficult situations you can see the years of discussion is from 2018 till up to 2023 the black and the red line is about the projection so what has actually happened is all the green and the blue line so 2020 obviously you can see that there was a dip coinciding with our covid years and slowly it is uh, recovering but what they are forecasting is it will actually decline right so we saw the inflati- inflationary condition we saw the monetary tightening happening at different situation uh, locations and countries so therefore there was already a uh, warning which was given that everything will slow down in terms of growth the growth uh, slowing down is also being extended to the trade right so therefore uh, we uh, they are giving a very uh, lower level of this uh, growth which is somewhere between 3 to 3.5 percent so this is world trade organizations uh, projection we have to be watchful but slowly we have to become hopeful that's what uh, they want to convey this uh, is a comparison between world and india you can see india is in blue colored line and uh, then uh, the world picture is given above uh whenever you see this um, data given as percentage of gdp i want to give you a caution right anything which is presented as percentage of gdp in external sector is only to convince ourselves it is not true i'll tell you the meaning of it assume that uh, india has to pay some 500 dollars to some country then they will say uh, they will multiply this 500 dollar with indian rupees say for example 80 82 rupees they will multiply and they will arrive at a volume because denominator gdp is in indian rupee we are following what we are talking if i have to say what is the percentage of imports expenses to india's bill then i have to put how much we are spending on the imports divided by gdp gdp will be in inr indian rupee numerator is a conversion of the dollar into indian rupee you can you pay any of this uh, payments maybe some countries they are slowly accepting us to pay the inr but can you treat indian currency as an international currency as long as india's currency is not becoming international currency any of this data no whichever is given as percentage of gdp is only to understand the volume none of this data should give you the confidence that india will be able to pay the import bill india can print currency but india cannot meet import bill with the printed indian currency you understood the context yes or no pana irukku kudukka mudiyadu kudukkaradhukku denominator inga podala the denominator should always be forex reserves to so that only you should actually put this as percentage but they won't do it i'm going to show you several indicators today which will be given as percentage of gdp 
this is only an indicative number to understand if india is earning 100 rupees uh, how much rupees is it earning or spending through trade to that extent you register this data into your mind uh, this doesn't mean any capability for india and this was the reason you remember in 1991 we had one balance of payment crisis have you heard about bop crisis in 1991 what was the crisis all about ah uh, we were not able to do what not we don't go up to the debts first you have to talk about we were not able to repay the imports interest all up around first the major commodities have to be imported and what would have been the major commodity all time no uh, oil fuel right so we didn't have uh, dollars to pay even for two weeks of imports that was the situation when india declared bop crisis why it could have printed currency and given back the money no uh, you are doing so much during covid you are creating so much of uh, backup for it why were you not able to print currency and give it back to other countries because india's uh, currency is not an international therefore understand the significance of the graphs what is going to upcome so now we can see that uh, total trade as percentage of gdp if i say it for the world it means something else for the world out of the dollars if you say 100 dollars is the total earning of us if you keep this graph as us uh, 56 percentage of them it is being earned through trade that's what is being meant for us and it means it because dollars are traded is it not but that's not the meaning for india we have 45 percentage of our uh, gdp getting represented through the trade but it doesn't exactly mean what it wants to say but at, at least to the volume wise we can uh, appreciate india that uh, it is following the trend what the global trend is there recently rpm has introduced that uh... Uh, globalizing our indian rupee uh, globalize my it's not our announcement of globalizing okay. it is the acceptance of the global level countries to take indian rupees we want to be uh, very strong and powerful and uh, we want to carry that pride but uh, if i give see money's role is only this no whichever is getting accepted as a uh, medium of exchange that becomes money but our thing the moment they get inr in their hands other country people should have the confidence that they'll be able to spend it back somewhere else unless and until that confidence is there uh, we may aspire for greater things but it has to be achieved only when our currency appreciates when our debt level goes down when we have very good foreign exchange reserves when we have very good, uh, you would have studied that bop surplus and deficit at that time you would have even studied about the develop the country scenario so no, i uh, as we go ahead i'll tell you about that point also but aspirations are there we want to become and it's also written in economic survey the, that we want to become this wanting to become will happen one day when countries accept indian rupees right so as of now we are we are giving a good picture that we are catching up with the global level trade levels this diagram or this graph is actually trying to tell about the export and import performance and uh, india's rank in world trade so you can see that uh, when you say merchandise exports you have to assume it as goods so the rest of the things are all uh, services the third uh, line will be showing both the goods plus the services so in case of the goods uh, our rank or the Uh, export performance has slowly improved we can say that we have uh, marginally uh, increased in the export of the goods whereas in the services we remained the same so both together there is a marginal increase when we come to the import uh, performance you can see that in import of the goods also we have increased all you have to do is compare this first line with this first line so with the world merchandise exports when we have improved by 0.2 percentage in the world merchandise imports we have improved by 0.4 percentage which means that we have actually started importing more than the exporting right 
uh looking at the world uh, commercial services imports here also we have increased though in the exports we remain the same but services imports we have uh, increased so overall picture has also improved this is not actually okay but this is actually uh, this is services imports no uh, you will be always thinking that india is very good in um, services we may be importing less and we may be import, exporting more which is also true in one sense but uh, this uh, commercial services is getting dominated with the transportation services that's one of the reasons why we are importing more when compared to the um, exports right exports we are very good in it i'm going to show you the services chapter immediately after finishing the external sector so that there will be a connect between the chapters but of course we have imports also here india's rank in world trade so in merchandise exports we have uh, improved from 18 to 21 should i call it as an improvement is a question merchandise imports we have definitely improved over there because we are importing a lot service exports almost remaining the same service imports are also almost remaining the same right maybe we are becoming better off in service exports one rank we have gone ahead for us in terms of imports we are remaining the same this trade no the rank uh, don't take it in absolute sense again it is economics if some other country performed bad we will become better off though we have comparatively uh, less uh, bad something like that <laughs> so somebody is falling down very much we are falling down a little bit so in the ranking the order will be still maintained so don't just uh, get carried away by the uh, ranking this uh, share is a good thing for us to remember like just to have an idea none of this data will be actually asked in the examination but you need to know how uh, india is performing in middle of all this uh, situations right now a bit more of detail on the exports and imports whatever we said as a overall picture the moment uh, we say exports you should now think about all the commodities what india can export ah uh, at the back of your mind you should now dig out examples what is india exporting what is india exporting ah uh, refined petroleum right so that's why they have given you only two categories here pol and non pol right non pol will be bulking up can you give me some example for the non pol other than the refined petroleum is india exporting anything else at all pharma products pharma products gems ah uh, gems and jewelry yeah we do export then iron and steel nobody is from the subsistence sector here or urban elites ah uh, example kuda iron and steel varudhu yeah palm oil palm processed processed palm oil okay okay like the petroleum thing we are processing it and then doing it okay any agriculture product we are exporting no subsistence sector representation in the class huh? uh spices we are exporting then coffee tea condiments textiles rice onion tea yeah of course sorry so all of them we are getting it bulked under the non pol exports now look at the color of the graphs uh, we'll first look at the petroleum and oil thing the green colored thing in the recent past we are actually doing well in it but of course in quarter 3 there was a based upon the price of the oil obviously there will be fluctuations because if we import only first of all we'll be able to process it and then export it but in case of the non pol exports that segment is actually very big when compared to this pol but uh, why we always say that petroleum oil is the major item which is exported because as a single item it will be having a major share 
if you look at this blue thing no it will be having n number of items into it none of them will be taking up as much uh, share as the pol that's why the diagram is given like this right so we can see that uh, this is all the volume of money what it has earned so it's all written in us dollar billion so through the non pol exports uh, there is a slight uh, downfall uh again when we are talking about exports you have to remember it as the global consumption whenever the consumption is getting into trouble people won't import so we won't be able to export so we may be having things ready in our hands but if there are no takers we won't be able to export it doesn't mean that we don't have items to export people don't demand then we won't be able to export so there was a demand slump and now only it is slowly improving so accordingly when the demand improved we did export a lot is it not after 2020 in 2021 you can see that it gradually increased and then now again into the difficult situation look at the merchandise imports now again you are having uh, three categories pol gold and silver imports and uh, non pol non gold silver which means other than these two items they have uh, clubbed it in the third uh, graph so again petroleum and oil imports you can see that the bar is taller than the previous slide obviously for the domestic consumption we are importing it a part of it we are processing it and then we are exporting it so that bars are standing taller the orange colored bars and uh, you have the uh, yellow colored for the gold and silver imports obviously they would have made this yellow color for us to remember the gold right so you can see that the color is actually fluctuating uh, <clears throat> if you think that gold and silver import is for domestic consumption you have to have an alternate idea also gold is not imported all the time for consumption by women gold is imported by men because they think it as a method of savings or investment so always they will relate uh, gold and uh, women uh, in the in terms of consumption so this is not a consumption graph what i have given here this is a uh, different type of economics graph where we want to say that whenever people feel that the financial situation is in trouble they will look for physical assets to go and put their savings one of which is gold whenever share market is in trouble you will see gold will do well gold's demand will increase at that time that is what is the meaning of this particular graph and then we look at the green colored thing what are the other items which we are importing what will be there in that green bar petroleum is out gold and silver is out rest of the commodities automobiles of course semiconductor semiconductor things we had lot of struggle electronics mm edible oil exactly definitely petroleum and edible oil both are uh, in trouble in india that's all raw materials for farmers any example sugar we are importing no fertilizers we are importing fertilizers so there are lots of uh, chemicals fertilizers uh, drugs high order drugs we are very good uh, people in the generic drugs but we are not very good people in high order antibiotics kind of thing so still there is a larger chunk in the imports from the pharmaceutical side electronics automobiles there are lots of other things so we have a larger bill for the imports and you can see that the import uh, us dollar billion is all above 100 you can see the export us dollar billion didn't even touch 100 in the exports slide whereas the import slide had apart from the two key items the one uh, green bar itself is crossing above 
one another. So this itself is going to give us evidence that we are ending up in deficit. <clears throat> so they have combined both of these two graphs into one graph in this. Where you can see uh, first one by one, one color we will pick up at a time. Total imports is the blue bar, that 100 and above and all what we mentioned right now. It's again written in US dollar billion. The orange colored bar is talking about the total export. So it's obviously there is a deficit which we mentioned a few minutes before. What is there on the right hand side? Mercandise trade balance. So that's what is the difference between these two bars, which is being uh, represented here, which is running as a yellow colored line. So the difference between the exports and the imports, all the values are written in negative. Right. Now, this is about the uh, resilient performance of services trade. Of course, in the next chapter also, we are going to talk a lot about the services related thing. Uh, they are very particular to talk about the services here because you remember in the last class, we mentioned two uh, categories of services, uh, contact and contactless things. Right, so contact intensive services, contactless services, contactless services survived, contact intensive services fell into trouble. That is why the title of this table as resilient. We hope no, we know the meaning of that, and you can see that uh, resilience coming back on the transportation. Yeah you will be able to categorize, right? Manufacturing is a contact-based thing. Maintenance, transport, travel, construction, all of these things are requiring contact, contact-intensive services. And you have to see the difference in the numbers across the table, how they have uh, gradually improved. You can see it moved from 21 to 32.7 and all, 19.8 to 35.8. So this is half early thing, but these two, columns you can compare and you can see the first few of the services which we want to call as the contact intensive services uh, they have all improved a lot and which is what they want to call it as a resilient thing these things they would have performed earlier also as the same thing contactless you can see that financial services 4.3 4.8 5.5 5.6 5 you won't see a much difference because across the time it was performing the same but you will see a very good jump in the upper part of the table. So that is uh, it another thing. And you will also see that in terms of telecommunications, computer and information services also, there is a, a substantial jump in terms of the exports. Right? Why are we uh, talking about maintenance, transport, travel and construction in services? I hope you are now very clear upon the uh, components which you want to call as the manufacturing and components what you want to call as the services. If I say computer is here, should I call it as a manufacturing sector item or should I call it as a services sector? Service. It is a service sector. Though it is physically tangible, you can touch it and feel it. Still, you want to call it as the benefits what is derived out of it is the services. Similarly, when you say about the construction, there will be lots of things which will be services like the architectural thing, the interiors thing, many things will be services. In telecommunication, if you put up that uh, uh, tower, which is which could be belonging to the manufacturing sector, but what is the benefit which is derived out of it will be counted upon in the services, right? So there will be always a mixing and uh, the division of the manufacturing and services. So we have a larger list here. Now we are getting into this. Uh, we talked about the goods, that word merchandise in the first two, three slides. We are now talking about the services. You, you know any other word like merchandise for the services? Comparable word? Invisibles. You have to call it as balance of trade for the merchandise trade, balance of invisibles for the services, right? So here, when we are talking about the services, 
export and import a net of services green color is given for export you can see in all the places in all the quarters we have done very good in the services export services import has been increasing you have to notice that services import did not remain the same it kept increasing and uh, net of services that uh, one of the reasons why net of services actually may be fluctuating or not increasing as much as exports is increasing because there is an increase in the import of services mainly in terms of your uh, the previous slide whatever we had we have given data on the imports also you can see transportation the value us dollar billion 35.8 telecommunications computers and other other business services it's uh, lumped up but travel and transportation these are the two major items which you can see billing a lot in the services import right so that's it another reason why we are not able to improve the net of services there is one small uh, box item given in the economic survey i am going with the survey pages huh? it may be looking like i am jumping into concepts but i don't have an option i am going with the pages of survey there is a representation about the free trade agreements you would have studied about regional trade agreements preferential trade agreements free trade agreement common market monetary union economic union higher and higher levels of economic integrations yes or no what is free trade agreement if two countries agree for free trade agreement there will not be customs duties or the restrictions will all be removed mostly price based restrictions we also have quantity based restrictions that won't be removed com completely and all we know what is uh, the difference between price and non price restrictions if i impose a sanction it is non price but if i increase the custom duty it is price we know the meaning of the word sanction who is imposing sanctions on whom us will be always imposing sanction on various countries like china like china like north korea like pakistan no. okay so <clears throat> we have different types of uh, restrictions which will be removed between two countries for improving the trade between the two countries that is uh, free trade agreement india gives a bit more of names to this uh, it just doesn't stop itself saying it as the fta we have uh, keywords like um sika and sipa which is something like comprehensive economic cooperate uh, cooperation partnership kind of different words so you will be seeing all the history of whatever has been given here regional comprehensive partnership agreement african continental free trade area so they design uh, or put in keywords into this this is only to say that uh, countries uh, should be able to freely uh, trade so that trade creation and trade diversion can be improved we know the difference between these two things trade creation and trade diversion which is the impact of your regional trade agreements yes or no we have heard these two words assume that we are doing one fta with sri lanka uh, <clears throat> examples okay so when you do an agreement then you have to freely trade so what i'll do is i'll go and see what sri lanka i i wouldn't have a trader in one particular item at all but if sri lanka is suddenly offering me a new trade item i will accept it which in which case i will call it as a trade creation because i got into fta because i suddenly feel that that item is cheaper i will import into my country trade diversion is because fta has been signed with uh, sri lanka i used to take a coffee from kenya but now i am stopping the coffee from kenya and i am diverting the trade towards sri lanka so i am stopping elsewhere and i am diverting it so two activities will happen as a result of trade creation and uh, this rta this fta uh, trade diversion right so india is trying to say that uh, 
this multilateral trade negotiations are actually uh, becoming difficult you know now uh, everywhere there is a uh, regional things happening so wto's major agenda is every country should trade with every other country but because of this regional agreements it is all again getting localized and obviously regional agreements will happen only with the neighbors which means that globalization of the trade agenda itself is sometime getting into trouble but at least we should participate in the regional trade agreements so that uh, this kind of uh, exchange between the countries will improve so that's one of the tables which is being given here now again we are getting back to the core of our uh, external sector where we want to talk about current account balance and as a percentage of gdp again as a percentage of gdp it's a cautious measure to look at but we can definitely look at the current account balance what is there inside current account balance now you have to answer otherwise we are not finishing this slide current account balance la enna irukku ah idha da balance of trade and balance of invisibles because this is current account balance balance of trade will be usually in negative balance of invisibles will be in positive what is there inside this balance of invisibles services 1 that is 3 i want to call your remittances as the transfers what is here second item is it only the interest i want two more components dividends one more component louder interest agreed dividends agreed i want one more component profit on all of these three things will be called as investment income do we know that services will be in positive transfers will be in positive but investment income will be in negative you have to answer 3 o'clock afternoon after lunch please help me theriyuma theriyada services la moonu component irukku balance of invisibles is positive agreed why is it positive you have to first tell me that answer balance of trade negative you all agreed why uh so you have to tell with mathematics okay you always write it as x minus m you never write it as m minus x x minus m it is negative an answer which is why you said balance of trade is negative agreed now i have to write x minus m for balance of invisibles is it not yes or no but balance of invisibles there are three things services x minus m will be positive or negative that will be positive services it will be positive okay transfers the third thing which you wanted to mention what is example in transfers remittances and some official exchange between the govern governments the charitable donations grants all those things will come into it this is what is called as a secondary income in the first uh, chapter somebody was asking a doubt i don't know in the online also there was some division of primary income and secondary income primary income will be this thing our investment income secondary income will be about the transfers right so let us come back to the point so transfers will be positive investment income what is there in the in investment income is interest and dividends and profits right 
so now you have to uh, tell interest is related to debt dividends and profits is related to fdi and the fia whatever we have taken in the capital account i think we had a discussion about this in the last class investment income components do we know why we are writing interest and investment uh, uh, dividends and profits here you remember our budget public finance class two accounts idu vandavone adu marandichu budget two accounts revenue account and capital account under revenue we had revenue receipts revenue expenditure capital receipts capital expenditure when you said capital receipts you had two types debt creating non debt creating whenever you said a debt creating you mentioned all the types of borrowing of the government under dcr whenever you borrow you have to give back interest is it not you will come and keep that interest whatever you have to give under revenue expenditure because you have taken the borrowings under the capital account you have to pay the interest back to it under the revenue account and it is you have to give back giving back is an expenditure for the government so it was placed under revenue expenditure, expenditure. you can also uh, give loans that was also placed under your capital account where you would have said as the capital expenditure loans to the states loans to the schemes so when government gave the loans it will receive the interest which was placed under revenue, revenue receipts non tax revenue receipts agreed everybody is clear in this same picture you put into your mind here when you study current account and the capital account fdi fii they are all to be placed as non debt creating capital account we heard the word similar sounding non debt creating capital account under the capital account the loans whatever you borrow from the other countries or from the international organizations or from imf world bank whatever it is you place it under the capital account will be the dcr here for which you have to pay back the what interest right so debt creating you have to pay back the interest can india give loans to other countries do you believe in that yes. rarely it happens <laughs> so you will also get some interest the one point here between the capital account and the current account is in the budget we had two headings to deal with this revenue receipts and revenue expenditure but here you have only one heading to deal with it which is called as the investment income you are able to understand what i am telling if you write this interest here no you have to do this x minus m what is x minus m in interest parlance what is x minus m in interest interest received is x interest paid is m ah uh, from today onwards you have to put one more meaning to this x and m it is not exports and imports it is receipts and payments for the country now you have to stand inside rbi country ku varava country ku selava everybody heard x and m is not exports and imports from today it is only whether the country is earning or it is spending whatever it is spending it could be interest it could be dividends it could be profits whatever it is they are all yam whatever is earned interest dividends profits everything is yes. x now you tell me interest received will be bigger or interest paid will be bigger so x minus m will automatically become into negative, negative. that's one part for the dcr now you tell for the dividends and profits no india is receiving fdi fii for which it has to share back the dividends and the profits now the question is, is india doing fdi with other countries you have any hope on india is india going and doing fdi in fii in other countries some people are still not convinced apdi la nadakuda ha nadakudu india is also going and doing fdi and fii in other countries but rbi will always try to control them why dollars inda dana kudupom 
you want to go and do business in dubai if you want to put a establishment in dubai i have to give you dollars i am rbi i don't have dollars to give even for my import so i won't encourage it so now come back to the question when i am doing fdi in another country what should i get back fdi panna interest kudupaangala i didn't know this when i do fdi i should get back profits when i invest in the other countries shares fii when i do it i indian do it in other countries i will get back yes. dividends fdi means you get profits fii means you will get dividends so these two things coming back to us ah uh, so those two things what you are getting as the dividends and the profits will be kept in exports what you have to give us the dividends and the profits you have to keep it under imports now you tell this x minus m will it be positive or negative negative are we doing more fdi or are we getting more fdi getting more we are getting more fdi when we are getting more fdi under capital account we have to give more dividends and profits under yeah. current account yeah. agreed or not yeah. therefore whether it is interest whether it is dividends whether it is profit our x minus m will be only don't be very happy that you are getting lot of fdi if you are getting lot of fdi you should go and do things which will be import substituting you are following what i am telling you have to go fdi vanduchu you have foreign dollars in your hand and you have to do a business what should you do the business in is either you have to do export promotion or you have to do import substitution what is the meaning of import substitution if i am getting this pen from china i should not get any further i should do this pen in chennai itself with the fdi purunjitha yes, otherwise if you get fdi it will result in sharing more of profits to the foreign countries and it will result in current account deficit widening don't assume it is only because of merchandise imports india is suffering from current account deficit india is suffering because we are getting money under capital account so every action has a consequence to it therefore this connection this investment income is a very very important component between the current account and the capital account. have you followed this so now you look at the slide current account balance the components of it is given current account has become into deficit whenever the bar is toppling below zero it is deficit can we interpret this now this line is zero if you see the bar falling down it is all deficit india had one or two some small time period when we had had surplus uh, we should be proud of it once in a while we should become proud of ourselves but quarterly quarterly you can see that the deficit is actually widening the deficit widening the main culprit will be the petroleum oil imports on one side the other side this kind of investment income also pulling us down so if we are borrowing more under capital account we have to give back more interest under the current account so that is also there so this graph is exactly what we discussed so far you can see that what are all the things above they have deciphered this current account balance the tallness of this bar is less but the depth of this bar is high which is why overall we have ended up in negative that's the first observation the second thing is lo is net transfers net transfers is basically the remittances what we receive and the uh, they make use of the word net to say that uh, received minus the paid x minus m uh, can remittances go out of our country possibility foreigners will also come and work here in india and send some money back to their country in terms of dollars so they make use of the word net but still that is positive that's why it's all on the other side of zero and then net services so we had uh, in the services so services investment income and the transfers services and the transfers 
or on the good side then we had this balance of trade which was obviously on the bad side right net to mercantile trade balance which is the light green area this is the bot negative this is services this is the transfers now comes this net investment income the dark colored this is where all your three components are staying what are they interest dividends and profits they are also on the negative side which is pulling down the positivity of the services and the transfers but uh boi overall will be positive bot will be negative this positive will not be able to cover this negative which is why overall it results in negative ஒன்னுடிய <laughs> like this so this tallness will not be sufficient to deal with this depth therefore the result becomes overall negative that is why our current account falls into deficit are we done with this graph this is again one unrealistic or non realistic data for india current account balance as percentage of gdp india versus select countries of course for other countries it may be some meaning let us see that they have given two colors here consider this q2 2022 as post covid for you to easily remember and uh, read the interpretations q4 2019 as pre covid that was just the beginning of the covid so you can see that india they, we have highlighted the data slightly it was on the surplus side current account balance as percentage of gdp but now it is on very much on the negative side mainly to indicate that we have to pay a lot for the imports you remember our formula c plus i plus g plus x minus m right so in that uh, that x minus m will become negative x minus m as a whole it will become negative it is negative so that is going to go and reduce the national income or should you want to call it as domestic income income of the country how much is that value to the total gdp is what they want to calculate so that's the calculation which they have presented here as minus 3.5 there are countries which are having very different different scenarios everywhere you have to look at the graph whether post covid that's the blue thing whether they have come on to the positive side uh, except for china is it not indonesia yeah that is pre covid blue color line mattum paarenga china indonesia they are the two countries who are actually doing a surplus in their current account and china story is very different they had a very difficult period even before every country fell sick so uh, therefore q4 itself was covid for them so at that time their surplus was less but now they are doing very well right so that's one uh, observation from the thing composition of net invisibles now you all know what we are talking about is it not we are talking about the services and uh, they have given the diagram without the trade into this this is obviously that services thing this is the transfers this is the investment income right so the positivity of the services account is being pulled down by the negativity of the investment income services as such may be vibrant but 
your behavior in the capital account will have a say upon the current account particularly your balance of invisibles right but as such whether the services for this area has increased definitely it has increased which means that we are exporting more and we are also getting lot of remittances i am going to show you another graph where we are going to declare that india is one of the countries on the top receiving lot of remittances across the world right this is that remittance related uh, data as shown by world bank you can see india is on the top indians don't work for india is it not uh, there is a heavy brain drain happening brain is getting drained but financially we can, we are becoming better off because we are sending it back to the country hmm? lots of implications to this graph but we should be happy that uh, at least remittances are coming back to the country so we have a very strong foundation family based life still continuing which is why they are sending it back to the families here coming to the second account of the current account balance we finished to see now we are looking at the capital account balance capital account uh, surplus is narrowing amid uh, global uncertainty <clears throat> what are the items under capital account can somebody list them down fdi fii loan loan from where there will be short term loans which we will be even borrowing from other countries banks and other things then there will be loans from other governments then there will be loans from international organizations right so there are varieties of loans which are there uh, <clears throat> fdi fii loans all these items has another side also when i say you these components you have to work out in your mind we are doing fdi in other countries you heard what i said we are doing fii in other countries we are giving loans to other countries uh so the other side of the coin is also there whatever we receive fda fii loans received will all be placed under what between x and m i gave you two meaning to x and m is it not what is x what is m x means exports or second meaning whatever is received ha uh, is x whatever is spent is m yeah. so fdi received is x or m still the resolution is not coming uh, german person coming and investing in india and doing fdi what should i call it as x or m why is it m enga irund interest kudukringa interest modala kuduka matto profit enga irund kudukringa current account la kudukrad edhukku capital account la pesringa i am asking in capital account some german companies coming and doing fdi inside india what should i call this implication of this will come under current account later first you tell me for this it is x everybody agrees with me so fdi received fii received loans received short term loan received external commercial borrowing received you know the meaning of the word external commercial borrowing external commercial borrowing ecb yes or no if you say yes you have to tell me what it is ah uh, private sector people will go and borrow internationally from international banks government can borrow private sector can also borrow registered companies can borrow when registered companies borrow that will be called as external commercial borrowing ecb these are the components in the capital account and ecb is one of the major items under the debt creating capital account similar sounding question has been repeatedly asked about capital accounts non debt creating items the answer is fdi and fii 
we heard non debt creating capital account nu idoda moonu tharam prelims la ketirukanga you know the components of capital account you have to answer it as fdi and fii sometimes they ask it also as fpi you know the meaning of fpi portfolio investment both are i am using here in a similar context portfolio investment is going to mean that uh basket of decisions i do in some in share some in uh, different kinds of instruments risk taking less risk taking long term short term different companies derivatives but portfolio is kind of a wealth management right so either it can be called as fpi or it can be called as fii whatever it is they are to be called as non debt creating capital account the rest of the things ecb the loans everything will be dcr of the capital account so now that you have said that whatever you receive is all placed under ex and whatever we do as fdi we do as fii right and uh, we give sometimes loans to the other countries all of those things will be placed under m so x minus m will be what capital account will be mostly in surplus for india it has to be in surplus for india if it is not in surplus for india what will happen current account is already in deficit so bop will also become into deficit we don't want bop deficit we want a bop surplus that surplus is achieved through capital account that is the title here now can you read this title narrowing surplus amid global uncertainty we have a surplus in capital account but it is narrowing now you can go and assume why is it narrowing fdi is coming is less fpi coming is becoming less when whatever is coming inside the country is becoming lesser obviously my surplus will be lost no you are able to relate concept with the news fdi fii everything became lesser because of the monetary tightening elsewhere so when things are coming in less are kept under x for us so that surplus is actually falling down so that's the meaning of this we have we have had good surplus net capital account balance uh, <clears throat> capital account as percentage of gdp we are reserving for our commons but at least we can see that whether the capital account was in surplus you can see there is a very little surplus in the recent past because of the global uncertainty right and there is uh, when you are talking about this fdi and fii you have to also be familiar with the word capital flight i told you two things ha huh? fdi fii we receive fdi we do fii and fdi in other countries but this fii will fly away any time yes or no yes. german company coming and investing in business in india is fdi german company coming and buying shares from indian share market is fii if something goes wrong at the global level he will not be able to pull back the fdi immediately but he will pull back fii then also the surplus will come down appo in capital velila poidudu that is why i told you whatever goes out of the country is all m we heard whatever comes inside the country is all x whether it is going into the pocket of rbi or is it going out of the pocket of rbi is the matter right why am i saying rbi can we make use of dollars assume by remittance your cousin or your brother sister is sending from america to you can you take dollars go to santosh supermarket buy commodities <laughs> No, no. are we allowed to do it no, somebody was asking about international level of uh, indian currency uh, this all should happen this is that we were talking about the capital account convertible which is not there in india we are still in partial full current account convertibility but partial capital account convertibility we will not be allowed to hold dollar denominated accounts remittance la dollar varum but we can't open a savings account which can be dollar denominated 
every single rupee which is earned as dollar inside the country goes into the pocket of rbi the moment you hear the word foreign exchange you should immediately remember rbi it doesn't go to government uh, be very very careful in the interpretation dollars don't go to government dollars go only to even if government is getting funding from abroad from world bank from imf it has to go and give it to rbi rbi is the only person who will be able to control and make use of foreign exchange reserves right so coming on to right hand side diagram composition of capital account balance like the current account balance we are going to look at lots of things on the above side you can see that right mainly because all the things what we are receiving we are placing it under that's why it is positive what are all there one color brown net other capital including rds other capital is it could be banking capital or the external commercial borrowing and other things can be placed here between the banks the yellow color thing <clears throat> in the recent past it has been in negative i'll tell you an interpretation for this banking capital uh, if i am a business company i go and borrow from the uh, international banks which means borrow means i get the money as soon as i get the money they'll come and keep it as a loan and keep, they'll place it under yes but you you will be sometimes seeing it to be negative then you should not assume that foreigner came to indian bank you will never assume such things i know that <laughs> but still because i am asking you to do the reverse things we receive fdi we do fdi we receive fii we do fii so i go and borrow from international banks so foreigner should come and borrow from my bank no amma ma illa that and all will not happen this negative is not because of that i'll tell you why this negative comes this negative comes when we repay back the loan followed what i said like how the fii goes out of the country and we called it as capital flight whenever you give something put it under m when you see something in negative no you are giving when you are seeing something in positive you are receiving so this yellow color though it is called as a net banking capital the word net banking capital which means that i borrowed less this year but i had to give back a lot of loan which i had borrowed earlier which is why negative then what we have the net loans no, loans is also having difference in their uh, placement we have received more loans and net foreign investment this is fdi and fii so we have received more fdi and fii than we have done as fdi and fii therefore the positive and the negative things so the negative side is lesser the positive side is bigger therefore we have capital account surplus done with the basics pop no in a similar way <clears throat> we can we actually have bop surplus what is the meaning of the bop surplus how do you arrive at bop current account plus capital account current account is in capital account is in overall we are having positive which means what we have a positive capital account which is bigger than negative current account so we have some positive and what do we do with this positive rbi will take it definitely no doubt on it rbi will take and do what it has to place it in reserves so if you want to write thinking ya white page kadikuma Oh, I have some space here. Okay. Current account plus capital account. Okay, pa. Parvala. Negative account and this is positive, and I have some surplus. What do I do with this surplus? What do I do with this surplus? I am RBI. What do I do with this? 
I have to go and keep it in the foreign exchange. How is India earning in foreign exchange reserves? Now you tell me. How did BOP became surplus? Capital account. India is earning dollars through capital account, not through current account. Right? So they will write this thing itself as a formula. Current account plus capital account plus what? Forex. That's why you said balance of payment will be always zero. Positive and negative should get managed. Followed? That is called as balance of balance of payment. BOP can become deficit. BOP can become surplus. You agree to that? Depending upon capital account, current account balance, BOP can become deficit. BOP can become surplus. Surplus vanda, Kaila, if you get $100 in a year, what do you do? You have to go and place it in the foreign exchange reserve. So you put that also into the equation, then the equation will become zero. Fine. When there is a balance of payment deficit, what will you do? $100 is deficit. Capital account la pano illa. Current account deficit is becoming larger. Then what will happen? You have to take it from the foreign exchange reserves. At that time, you have to write plus 100 here. When you're placing it in the surplus, you have to write it as minus 100 here. We followed what we said? Yes or no? I'll give some random numbers. Current account deficit is minus 5. Capital account surplus is plus 9. What will be the answer? When I bring this to the other side of the equation, it will be written as minus 4. No. You all agree? Huh? This Then it will become 0. Upper balance of payment is balanced. But Minus 4 in all, the meaning of this minus 4 is this minus 4 is actually placed in the foreign exchange reserves. Positive. It was a surplus. That is why you minus it on the other side. No. If a number is swap, you have minus 9 and plus 5. Answer will be minus 4. If you want to make this equation into 0, you have to write it as plus 4 on the other side. There will be a balance of payment table in the economic survey. Whenever you have the balance of payment surplus situation, they will write a minus in the foreign exchange reserves. You followed or not? Like you are naming fiscal deficit and giving it a positive number, 4%. Yes or no? There you swap the formula. Do you remember how you write the deficit formula? Deficit gara formula sulanga. Revenue deficit? Revenue deficit? Louder. Revenue expenditure minus revenue receipt. Do we write formulas like that? Only government will like that. Write like that. See here the formula is X minus M. Income minus expenditure. But government will write it as expenditure minus income. You understand how the numbers are being played? There it will write fiscal deficit 4%. Here we are going to write balance of payment as the original thing. Income minus the spending and deficit or surplus. But to balance the balance of payment, you have to write it in the opposite way because you want to make the equation into zero. Therefore, if you look at the balance of payment table in the budget, they will write every item, services, transfers, investment income, all your FDI, FII, everything they will write. And in a year, if India is in a BOP surplus, they will write that uh, amount, no, whatever is going into the foreign exchange reserves as minus. You followed what we are talking? Everybody is following? Purida, Purilia. We are balancing the balance of payment by making it into zero. And data interpretation from the table should be very, very clear. I have not put the table here. But 
you should understand it will be written plus when we have a bop deficit year minus when we have bop surplus year are we done any doubts okay this they are talking about the fdi you are seeing the title net you should assume that the x minus m is already over we followed title x minus m of fdi is already over that's why the title but still we are positive which means that we are receiving more fdi than we are doing the fdi that's the meaning of this uh, positive thing so we have tall bars over here of course uh, there's a quarterly bar the last two things so one whole year we have had a good us dollar billion of fdi this is about uh, foreign portfolio investment that's uh, that fii what we were referring to you're seeing that something toppled what is the meaning of this fpi getting into negative is not that we are doing more fpi fpi in other countries it's because the flight of the capital is happening people were withdrawing their capital from our country mainly because of inflationary pressures followed by the monetary tightening complicated with this war conditions and everything so slowly towards now end of it now we are seeing some positivity in the foreign portfolio investment the two colors given here is about the debt and the equity i'm sure in the share market class they would have taught you about the shares and the derivatives we know the differences some basics of it yes or no you have heard about the word debentures debentures they are all negative instruments it's like taking loan if i take loan from you i have to give you back interest if i make you invest in my share i have to give you back dividends yes or no yes, you are able to see the color difference here equity is all share related debt is all some examples are like the debentures so based upon the underlying instrument uh, the colors have been given here so still debt related thing is in negative we are not getting a good amount through that but uh, equity people are coming forward to come and invest in the shares in indian companies so this is your overall bop the surplus in the balance of payment and adequate forex reserves and import cover the blue color is all current account the green color is all capital account and uh, then they have also presented bop as percentage to gdp you know the meaning of it so i am just going to tell you about current account and the capital account colors you can see that uh, 2021 they have split it across the quarters so overall you actually see current account mostly being in the deficit uh, in this graph toppled below this uh, zero and capital account has been in surplus side except for one quarter of this 21 22 where the fpi flight happened so much that even the capital account got into the deficit side you can see this particular small green area so the rest of the time we always see the capital account being surplus on the other side this capital account surplus is what is actually covering the current account deficit and overall we are getting the surplus in the balance of payment that's this uh, diagram and uh, by making this a surplus in the balance of payment we have accumulated dollars into the foreign exchange reserves this is one of the reasons why india is still not becoming an international currency with inr we are not uh, earning money into foreign exchange reserves yet we are only receiving capital and accumulating it into the foreign exchange reserves today we can boast ourselves like we have 550 us dollar billion this much of money with us we are the sixth largest foreign exchange reserves holding in the whole world all those boasting is not the real boasting because the underlying fact how did you accumulate foreign exchange reserve is not being answered through the current account but it is uh, answered through the capital account capital account means 
any one day we have to give it back right so therefore we are not actually very happy about the way how the forex reserves have been uh, accumulated but we can be happy on the other side what is the other side at least we are getting some investments and somebody is trusting us and giving us loan is it not and they trust that we will give it back to them so at least we have earned the trust of the global level countries so therefore to that extent we can be happy about ourselves now you are uh, seeing on this right hand side 563 us dollar billion that's the latest data about the foreign exchange reserves for some reason you please remember this number edodayadu relate panni idha nyabagam vechukonga because this is a essential macro economic data for us to uh, they won't ask you the data but it is essential for us to understand this uh, magnitude of foreign exchange reserves in the country for any discussions for the mains writing later so you can see that india has accumulated 563 us dollar uh, billion and uh, you see one green color graph running uh, over uh, the foreign exchange reserves which is uh, trying to uh, talk about the import cover so as i mentioned to you in 1991 we had the balance of payment crisis and we had money to give only for two weeks of imports which is why that's one of the major measures to see whether we have adequate uh, foreign exchange reserves so this is all uh, mentioned in months the right hand side this right hand side is very very important for us in this graph so you can see that whether we have money till 4 months or 8 months or 12 months or 16 months you can see that in some uh, part of the uh, 2020 uh, before that and all we have had uh, cover even up to 18 months and all but now we are having cover up to maybe say up to 10 months cover so now we are going to ask ourselves a question whether we have uh, adequacy of foreign exchange reserves uh there are different measures by which uh, globally countries to satisfy themselves if we have coverage for 3 months if we have coverage for 6 months if we have coverage for 1 year so like that they put different levels of coverage and they see that whether we have adequacy of foreign exchange reserves okay. so here it is foreign exchange reserves as percentage of annual imports uh you can see that india again the two periods no this is pre covid this is post covid it's almost coming back or bouncing back to the same situation foreign exchange reserves as percentage of annual imports what is there in the numerator forex what is there in the denominator imports so you should have the answer at least one is it not yes or no makes sense right if you have one uh, dollar in the reserves you will be able to spend that one dollar towards the imports so how much percentage if it is closer to half percentage i'll be happy that is what is this one means if it is not then we are not even covering the annual imports right there are different different countries which are having uh, different percentages you can see that china is having a very high percentage of foreign exchange reserves if this data goes up this answer will go up you understand that and the numerator goes up or the denominator goes down then the answer becomes higher simple max so this number if you have to move from 25 to 75 75 to 125 either your import should come down or your foreign exchange should increase china was able to achieve both probably <clears throat> therefore we import cover is if i am importing for 100 dollars do i have that much of dollars in my foreign exchange reserves because that is what is essential for me to pay back to the other country that's uh, done on monthly basis because 
we can't uh, the situation of import differs from quarterly monthly everywhere so all the uh, months won't be having the same amount of imports it's not just the pol there are other items which also seasonally on several situations it will change so they'll always see whether we have foreign exchange reserves adequate to cover for one year based upon the previous history they will try to cover it and they'll try to see the projection if we have for it then we are on a safer side so that is the data what we are trying to present here. this is the discussion which we mentioned three months or six months or one year then we have this total foreign exchange reserves in excluding gold on the other day i mentioned you components of foreign exchange reserves can you recall back what is there in foreign exchange reserves gold foreign currency assets we have to call it as fca foreign currency assets special drawing rights and reserve transposition four thing so this excluding gold they have mentioned how much of the values there so here it is india in us dollar billion so we have substantially increased from where we were right you don't see china in the list right i wanted to see the volume imagine how america will feel about china ah huh? us dollars sitting in foreign exchange reserves of china large volume us prints it gets accumulated in china china is a major trading partner to many countries it's not just a major major trading partner to us itself but it's also major trading partner so everybody pays in dollars to china so therefore china is a threat to us right so now we come back to the exchange rate of indian rupee as well as uh, against this major currencies now you have to tell me what is uh, appreciation and what is depreciation before we get into this graph india gives 80 rupees to get 1 dollar assume if 80 becomes 85 what is the meaning of it 80 becomes 75 appreciation. appreciation right so you can now interpret this graph uh in this side to get 1 dollar or 1 pound we just don't call it as 1 yen the yen is all in larger number so we call it as 100 yen and 1 euro uh, it's easy for us to understand with the dollar and pound sterling okay so you can look at this orange colored graph this one this is for the us dollar what is happening to indian currency if it is gradually increasing like this what is the meaning depreciation, depreciation because we have to give more money to get the same 1 dollar and are you seeing somewhere there is a decline then japanese yen there is a decline euro there was a decline again it is increasing decline means it is going to mean appreciation for us and the pound sterling definitely we appreciated against it but now again we are depreciate right so depreciation has its own impact what is it depreciation helps who helps exports and hurts the imports, imports. appreciation is on the other side so based upon this you can make the interpretations if depreciation has happened provided volume of trade is also increasing you have to combine with that the moment the depreciation happens we will want to export but somebody should be ready to import only then we will be able to send our exports so combining the interpretation we can look at it you what do you want the currency to happen appreciate or depreciate what do you want why you are not answering what do you want to happen to our indian currency appreciate or depreciate appreciate one side one segment is waiting to see what the answer is huh? why do you want it to appreciate it will hurt the exports is it not it will help the imports why do you still want it to appreciate 
then only india will become an international currency your pride lies in appreciation of the currency not in the depreciation if you are a developed country you have to have appreciation not depreciation right uh, imagine one day you can give 1 rupee and get 1 dollar ah uh, very proud moment for indian is it not ah uh, now we are giving 80 rupees to get 1 dollar if we can give 1 rupee and get back 1 dollar that's when we are really uh, a developed country so we'll see uh, the other uh, types of exchange rates other than what we have uh, seen as the first two things exchange rate what is the type of the exchange rate system which we have what do you mean by mixed is floating exchange rate with the central bank's intervention that's how uh, there is no word called as mixed there is either fixed or floating so floating exchange rate system with the central bank's intervention right so now we get back to the rear and near which is what i asked uh, do we know the meaning of this word near nominal effective exchange rate what is this nominal effective exchange rate so what we are going to do is we are going to compare ourselves first of all with sdr indian currency and we will take some major trading partners of india major trading partners can you mention some countries whom you know as major trading partners china us europe um, australia uae uh, oil producing countries so we have varieties of trading countries so they will see the bilateral trade the meaning of bilateral trade is both of us exporting and importing and in that they will find out the top 36 countries that was older thing now they are finding out top 40 countries when you see the word trade you should assume both exports and imports in that volume when you see the export only india doing export to them so we are going to do one particular calculation leave this trade export all those things but we are going to say based upon i am india you are all the foreign countries i am going to pick up 40 of you and because you are the major trading partners to india and i am going to do one weighted average why am i going to do this weighted average i am going to see whether i am internationally competitive or not internationally am i appreciating or depreciate for doing this exercise what they are asking us to do is india should compare itself with sdr all 40 countries you are all there no every one of you your currency should be compared with sdr first of all because we both have to have one common measure so whenever you are going for comparisons you need to have standard things is it not ha huh? when i say that uh, one area is in acre and another area is in square feet how will you compare these two things you understand the comparison problem when i say the comparison first of all both of us should come on to the common platform so how do i make you to come on to the common platform i do a methodology what is the methodology india how much rupees should i give to get one sdr you are all familiar with sdr what is there in one sdr who is having this sdr what is this sdr special drawing right imf is giving the special drawing rights to whom to all the countries in the world how much drawing right you will get it depends upon your gdp and other things if you are a very good performing thing i give you more quota call it as quota right so india has 100 quota and another country has 500 quota like this different different countries will have the drawing rights but what is there in this one sdr what is it is it 1 dollar is it 1 sterling is it 1 yen it's 1 pound sterling it is basket of all the things what i told you right china's ruble has been included recently and we are trying to get into it they are not accepting us so one sdr five major currencies are there inside 
so what i have to do is like how much money i give 80 rupees today i give to get 1 dollar like that i have to give some money to get 1 sd or no i'll put that number on the numerator that's called as e okay what i i is india then i ask all of you to do the same thing you go and give some money and get sdrs so you all give some your country's currency and get sdr and that will be taken as 40 countries value will be taken in the denominator i means every country okay first country second country third country everybody so put together 40 divided that is a value and this value is actually called as uh, nominal effective exchange rate i am comparing myself with somebody else's strength another country may give more money to get the same sdr i may be giving less money to get the same sdr if i am giving less and getting more sdr then i am powerful than compared to the others so the numerator should be good simple mathematics e should be big when e is becoming big then i am going to call myself as appreciating uh, i give some rupees and i get back two sdr but if i am depreciating no if i give that money i will not be given back with two sdr i'll be given back with only one sdr 40 rupees is required to give one sdr now if i give 80 rupees they'll be giving me back two sdrs but if my currency is depreciating against those dollar pound sterling chinese ruble everything sitting in sdr then i have to give more money to get the same one sdr are you following my logic right so uh, i have to give less and then get more of the sdr so i give less and i get more sdr so in that case i am going to call myself as appreciating the numerator should be big what i get back is sdr so that should become 2 3 4 5 so 2 3 4 5 is increasing in number so when e is increasing in the numerator it's a good thing for the country which means that i am appreciating you followed what i said yes sir i give more money but i get back less sdr then it is depreciating so you have to say that international competitiveness is falling very much now down, down now because i am having depreciating currency if this is increasing like this and all no then you can interpret it as appreciating same meaning like appreciation and depreciation only what will happen if you are depreciating then it means that your strength of the currency is very less you are not in a very good scenario that's the meaning of it but when you are appreciating, we see that your international competitiveness is becoming good. Not, don't go and interpret in terms of what will it have an impact on the exports and imports. But it's showing your strength in the international comparison. That your currency is actually appreciated. This is why I asked you the question whether the currency should appreciate or depreciate. Don't assume that all the time depreciating is good. The reason for depreciation is bad. The impact of depreciation is expected to be good. There is a difference between both of these things. When FDA or FII goes out of the country, your currency will depreciate. So the reason is bad. But after the depreciation, we expect the exports to improve so that it will become better off. So depreciation is always not a good thing to happen. Subsequent to that, we hope something good will happen. So, appreciation is the best thing to happen. When will appreciation happen? When many people are coming and investing with us. When we are doing very good exports. That's when appreciation of the currency will happen. So, appreciation, the cost will be good. The impact will be bad. If it is a developing country. Right? So, therefore, you can see that uh, the, the interpretation of this goes like this. Have you understood this near? Shall I go a bit more on the rear? I am going to add one more variable into this. Shall I? Right. Now I am going to do this P by PI. That is nothing but the inflation index of every country. Inflation index of every country. We have our CPI combined as the major nominal anchorage. Is it not? You are all familiar with the word nominal anchorage of inflation. That is the word with which they will ask the question. Nominal anchorage of inflation. What is the answer? CPI combined. There is no other answer to it. 
how do i measure inflation in india i have wpi cpi cpi rural cpi urban is it not of all the varieties of cpi and the wpi i know what is the nominal anchorage of inflation which is the major measure which is used to measure inflation cpi combined you will know the answer you will not know the question yes or no monetary policy is mostly decided based on cpi combined you know that there is a monetary policy committee and it wants the inflation to be between what numbers 4 plus or minus 2 percentage of what that is what i'm asking you 4 plus or minus 2 percentage ngal okay edu and the range kulla irukku nungiradha dhaan kelvi cpi combined and that's called as nominal anchorage of inflation in inflation is nanguram right anchorage is nanguram inflation is fixed based on cpi combined now we are going to talk about that cpi or the price index only into this formula which is why i went there to bring you back into this formula we are going to add on to the inflation into this international competitiveness how am i going to add on just look at this p by pi okay today inflation in india any numbers any percentage from the newspaper 4% 5% 6% 6% that's a bit of 6% uh, and you go and compare yourself with some other country some like argentina some like us chile canada uh, assume that number is 10% and giving you as an example okay you write this p by pi there should be that 40 major trading partners don't go out of box i am still within that 40 major people that 40 major trading partners my inflation versus that every country's inflation you understood 6 by 10 i am better off than them 10 by 6 i am worse than them do you understand yes sir yes, no yes ma'am purinja da puriliya 6 by 10 you what will be the answer what you will get max assume that this e by ei is 5 okay i'm just giving you a number so that we'll understand what we are talking uh this alone is 5 okay now if you say into 6 by 10 what is this we are better than other countries is it not appo 6 by 10 na 0.6 aidu ma so when you multiply 5 into 0.6 it will become value lesser than 5 yes. max yes, 5 into 0.5 it will become uh, value will 5 will become lesser than 5 yes, 5 becoming lesser than the original number or assume that i am getting the answer as 3 so 5 is becoming into 3 i am appreciating understood what i am talking you talk all the number here no 10 by 6 you will get more than 1 as the answer 5 into 1.5 or 1.8 will be more than 5 yes, depreciation yes, you followed what i said yes, slowly is yes, ma'am yes ma'am purinjada yes, yes, so any number multiplied by 1 remains the same multiplied by decimal becomes smaller multiplied by decimal will happen only when your country's inflation is better than other country's inflation which is 6 by 10 keep this example in your mind to remember if your country's inflation is worse than other country's inflation you will write it as 10 by 6 so further depreciation not only by the uh, dollars and other things strength but also because of the price values your country situation can become bad or better followed rear so based upon that we had very high values of inflation in the recent past are you seeing that the rear is becoming bad is or no so based upon the strength of the prices you can where is the rear in this green color this is rear okay actually you will be seeing that the near and the rear are almost behaving the same is it not in their behaviors if this is becoming taller this is also be doing going like this if this is becoming lesser this is also declining again you see the pattern 
near and rear are almost traveling in the same direction when appreciation happens they also both appreciate together depreciation happens but the intricacy of near becoming into rear is it's getting weighted by the inflationary measures okay one key word what you have to remember in this is both near and rear are being used for measuring the international competitiveness assume that there is a existing condition of depreciating which means that the e will be smaller divided by ei the value itself will be lower and on the right hand side assuming that our country's uh, inflation is lesser than the other thing i'll give you both the scenario lesser than the other thing which, which is 6 by 10 in which case you will have a decimal so you will multiply these two things and you will arrive at an answer that's how it's being uh, done for the interpretation the right hand side will be good the left hand side will be bad it is like that uh, surplus and the deficit overall surplus in your bop current account is in deficit capital account is in surplus you get a overall surplus still we appreciate that surplus it is something like that the essence of the story is this you may be appreciating or depreciating but what is the affordability of your currency to buy a commodity is what is sitting in this p by pi i may be uh, having like 50 rupees in my hand i may not be able to buy 1 dollar with that but i may be able to buy my commodities with that because my price is less agree you would have studied ppp purchasing power parity that's the concept which is actually getting inbuilt into rear you may not be able to see that uh, particular uh, e no it is totally at the mercy of the complete bop capital account will come current account will become deficit several things and you are applying the price upon it whereas in purchasing power parity the issue itself is different they will put to one basket of commodities and they will say that how much uh, indian rupees should i give to get that one basket how much dollar should be given to get that one basket how much yen should be given to get that one basket so every country will be telling their own currencies to get the same basket the concept is different purchasing power alone they see there but i am combining the purchasing power here upon the nominal exchange rate the word what you are seeing in the newspaper no 82 rupees is nominal what you are seeing here is real you are putting the price upon the nominal to make it into real it's like nominal gdp getting deflated to real gdp you remember our nominal gdp real gdp discussions you will be dividing the nominal gdp by cpi to get the real gdp it's it's something like deflating it but the point here is you just don't deflate it with your own price index rather you are comparing your country with 40 other trading partners you are arriving at an index and then you are deflating it. all of these things is only to do one thing just to check your international competitiveness mostly what will matter internationally will be near but to a country rear also matters because we may not have money to get a dollar but we may have money enough to buy our own things when prices are under control so that side it can be depreciating but this side it can be appreciate right so this is an overall picture at least for the examination say we should remember the word international competitiveness is being measured making use of near and rear right this is about the external debt outstanding <clears throat> more than this these are all the components of it i'll show you the next table which is much more relevant external debt indicators so now we are coming on to this uh, external debt data 610.5 us dollar billion 
Anybody remembers the foreign exchange reserves amount what we mentioned? 500 and how much external debt are we having? Louder. India is shining. One way you'll say we have huge foreign exchange reserves. On the other way, we have a huge external debt. You know, you have you heard about this word India is shining? No. Uh, between 2002 and 2007, that was the period when we were doing very well. You would have remembered the FRBM Act coming into picture, Surface Act coming into picture, and uh, your hung FDI becoming into a better FDI and performing well in the external sector. So external sector started giving you very good uh, foreign exchange reserves. So every day there will be a question in newspaper. What do we do with the foreign exchange reserves? You can't do anything with the foreign exchange reserves because you have a huge debt. And in that debt, what is exactly which you are concerned about is this. Short on debt to foreign exchange reserves. How much money should you immediately give off? Already you made one calculation for import cover, is it not? Yes or no? Few minutes ago we said adequacy of foreign exchange reserves. How much money do we have against the import cover? That was a calculation. So import is already ticking. And other than that, there is a short term debt. What is the short term debt? This will come through the capital account. Remember capital account? Import is all sitting under current account, whereas short term debt will sit under the capital account. For all of these things, we have only one thing, which is called as the foreign exchange reserves. Right? So now we are going to see that this percentage, you know, 24.7 percentage to the foreign exchange reserve. This is very, very important. We should actually pull it down less than 20 percentage. Then we are actually safe. What is the meaning of this? If I have 100 US dollar in the foreign exchange reserves, 25 US dollars I have to give off this year. Short term debt. Short term is one year. So within this one year, I have to give back 25 rupees, 25 dollars. So I'll be left only with 75 US dollars. I have to meet with my import bills. I should not fall into crisis. There are so many things, right? And uh, they'll do this uh, last column. Please don't look at this last column. Ratio of short term debt to total debt. They'll be very happy looking at this number because it is closer to 20 percentage, is it not? Huh? You understand the numerator denominator here? I'll write the numerator. Huh? Short term debt divided by total debt. How much is the total debt? 610 US dollar billion. Okay. Now, this is this one. The right one I will write. This is the wrong indicator. This is the right indicator. Short term debt divided by foreign exchange reserves. Is it not? Huh? Your repaying capability is sitting only here. Not here. Therefore, you should look at only this. And you should not become happy by looking at this. Because it's closer to 20. This is bad. Don't look at this column also. Ratio of external debt to GDP means nothing to us. Huh? GDP, we won't be able to pay back the external debt. So it's actually meaningless. They'll, they'll even put a comparison across different countries. One thing you can do, you can convert all your GDP into US dollar. Agreed? Then put the percentage. No, I will agree to it. Don't convert it into Indian rupees and do this percentage. Convert the GDP into dollars. You see this debt to service ratio? What do you mean by debt to servicing? You have to give back interest. Where are you giving the interest back from? You got the loans, you are placing it under the capital account. Where are you giving the interest from? Current account under what heading? investment income we saw the heading a few minutes before so in the investment income we saw that uh, title code as interest that interest will be put as a ratio to what they have not mentioned if it is a ratio to the foreign exchange reserves it is fine 
right ratio of foreign exchange reserves to total debt ah uh, this is the important ratio what is this foreign exchange reserves in the numerator what is the denominator 6 this is a very very important indicator we don't have reserves to cover our debt that's the meaning of this we don't have foreign exchange reserves to cover our total debt this is ratio of concessional debt to total debt this is okay sometimes uh, a good thing to happen some people will give uh, money at a lower rate of interest concessional debt but that proportion is only very less for the rest of the loan we have to give the normal rate of interest so are we done with this external debt indicators put the minus no 100 minus 24.7 will be long term nri deposits uh, there are three types of it one is nri ordinary nri external an fcnrb account there are, there are three types of it foreign currency uh, nri deposits should i tell you the details are we going overboard no you want to know what are these three types of deposits assume i am one person from chennai becoming nri going to singapore to do some job i become nri i had some savings account here in uh, state bank of india chennai i can't maintain it any more as a uh, simple savings account because i have become nri so i have to make it into nri ordinary account i am there in singapore whether i can put money into that i will have a question always why to maintain the account my family is all here i have gone there i am working there so whether i will be able to put money into that and whether my family will be able to take uh, money out of it some amount they will allow they will not allow you larger amounts the moment you put the money into the account they will convert it into indian rupees you heard then you have this nra external account second type there you can put more amount your salaries larger part you can put into it but the moment you put again they will convert it into indian rupees third type is what is mattering to us which gets connected to the capital account which is called as fcnrb account which is foreign currency non residential bank account there i can put the money i can maintain it as the dollars an indian government will pay the interest in dollars very interesting thing you heard about the remittances is it not so either you send it as the remittances or you work elsewhere but maintain one fcn or b account from which i will take that money and then make use of it for internally this is rbi's stand this fcn or b account when you uh, put it here they will fix it for 5 uh, years they won't let you to withdraw it very easily it will be mostly like a fixed deposit kind of a thing where they will say for 3 years for 5 years you have to keep it with us so this fcn or b account and all will come under this capital account along with the other uh, because i'll tell you one logic today uh, how we said the logic about the exports and the imports no there is yet another logic for loan where and all you hear the word you have to give back interest all of them are your liability you stand on the rbi side or stand on the government side it could be called as nra deposits it sounds like it's a good thing it's not because you have to give back interest on it sounds like fdi but you have to give back something is it not wherever that dividend is a liability to you that profit sharing is a liability to you that interest sharing is a liability to you at least in case of your fdi you can say that i didn't earn profits but when you take the loans you have to give interest whether you earn money you don't earn money whether you make loss whether you make good things you have to give back interest which is why the difference though both are sounding like liability debt creating non debt creating basics clear so that kind of deposits and all which are all like for 3 years 5 years will all get into the long term and your external commercial borrowing will also be long term external commercial borrowing will come with a ceiling 
government rbi will come and tell you private companies you will be able to borrow only this much every year they'll tell you some dollar billions that much only you will be able to borrow the moment you borrow you have to hand it over to rbi right so they are all sitting in the long term there is no discussion on the long term here because we are worried about whether we have the adequacy of foreign exchange reserves for one year or so or whether we are having even adequacy at all so that adequacy and all should be you should not just talk about the numerator and you are going out and saying that india is having very good foreign exchange reserves first of all the method how we got it is bad capital account not through current account secondly we have a huge external debt thirdly we have a huge import bill so combining all the facts only we have to talk about the foreign exchange reserves so then we have this debt ratios this is all like across the different countries they want to compare short term debt as the percentage of the total debt this is again immaterial to us ah uh, we should not talk about the total debt because we don't have foreign exchange reserves even equivalent to the total debt we have only less of it foreign exchange reserves as percentage of total debt this is a very very important indicator blue good total external debt as percentage of gni this also is not a useful indicator for us because we won't be able to pay with the denominator whether you want convert it into dollars or you put it in into indian rupees denominator ah vechi numerator ah pay panna mudiyadu so it is immaterial to us for us not for us and other countries for them it means for us it doesn't mean anything right which are the other countries which are bad those other and those than us huh? russia is having more foreign exchange reserves than its debt is it not that's good indonesia is bad brazil is okay vietnam is okay mexico is bad just look at the blue thing no because we are having 97% that's why the government keeps saying that we are sustainable debt country debt sustainability is there for the country first chapter it will tell one story that story is based upon the growth uh, it will say i grow so i borrow the last chapter it will say another story i have foreign exchange reserves so i have sustainability right we'll stop the class here i'll take it in the next session